Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out another episode of Drinks with Johnny. I am super psyched. I have a very special guest here today. The very strong, the very confident, the very healthy actor, comedian, Mr. Ron Funches. Oh, I just kind of get high and then mumble into a microphone? Did you know that was a lucrative profession? Oh, you made me change my posture the more you <laughs> talk about me. Thanks for Don't being on the show, come, man. Of course. I appreciate Thank you it. for having yeah, me. I yeah. appreciate it. Let's just get right into it. At the top of uh, my show, I usually make some sort of drink. Okay. I know that you're not a drinker at all, so mm -hmm. I'll be the one partaking today. But I went and found a recipe that is inspired by your Trolls character, Cooper. Okay. So <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people might think it's not a good idea to make an alcoholic drink after a child's cartoon. Oh, is that supposed to be for kids? It. You know what? <laughs> I, never, I love the movie. Everybody can enjoy it. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> So we're gonna take some whipped flavored vodka. That makes sense. It's gonna be a little cupcakey. I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna take two ounce pour on that. Maybe a little extra, you never know. And then we're gonna take a cake flavored vodka. Two ounce pour of that. A little extra, cause I like that one a little better. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gonna take French vanilla creamer. Two ounce pour of that. Killer, killer, killer. Now, we're gonna add some grenadine. Oh, you gotta have grenadine. Cause you know, Cooper's pink. Yeah. So we're gonna get a little Cooper hue to the drink, if you will. That's just one of my favorite flavors. Shirley Temples? Oh yeah, I love it. Shirley Temple, Roy Rogers, come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, and to give this a few shakes. While that sets for a second, I'm gonna take my drinks with Johnny shot glass. I don't know if you Ooh, knew I had my own shot glasses. Custom. Yeah, and we're gonna roll it around in some corn syrup right here on the rim. And then for your Cooper hair, you're gonna have some blue sparkles here. We're just gonna roll that all the How way around. How long have you been drinking? It's been a while. It's a, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you seem like an expert. <laughs> all right, then we're just gonna pour that right inside. And oh, then you have your color. nice, you have your nice little Cooper inspired shot. And now I get to taste it. <laughs> How is it? It's a delicious shot, but it's not something I can drink a lot of, so I'm gonna have a beer. Okay. And um, I know that you're a big wrestling fan. I just found this beer today. It's actually Stone Cold Steve Austin's IPA. You got IPA. the Stone Cold Broken Skull uh, IPA? Yeah. This is not the tap for this, by the way. It should be illegal to drink his beer from anything but I'm that. thinking it's the same. So we're gonna pour this, my man. And then we're gonna get over to the couch. Continue our conversation. Yeah, Let's do this. Know each other. All right, Ron, now we got you here on the couch. I wanna hear a little bit about what started it all. What got you? into stand-up comedy, where uh, I believe your career kind of started in the industry. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just love it since I was a child, since I was five years old. And my mom take me to the old Hollywood video stores and we would get videos and my sister would get something. I'd get like a wrestling video or some old WCW tape or, or some Richard Pryor tape. And my mom would also introduce me to a lot of stand-ups and that kind of introduced my love of it. Probably five years old and watching I Love Lucy and stuff like that. It's oh snap! Something I've always been really interested in. But it took me, you know, get my son. I had my son when I was 20, and then uh, he was diagnosed with autism when I was 22, and it kind of like jump started my think mind of being like, I better get a career, you know. Yeah. And so started open micing and just been hustling for like 13 years now. Yeah, well that hustling seems to be paying off. But real quick, I just wanna, you glossed over something that I don't think all the kids at home know. What the fuck is a Hollywood video? <laughs> <laughs> a Hollywood video was the main competitor of Blockbuster Video. Which is where you used to go to rent VHS tapes. So now they're mostly probably spaghetti warehouses. More guaranteed new releases at Hollywood Video. Who's one of your favorite comedians? You mentioned Richard Pryor. Yeah, you know? oh, my favorite growing up were always like Mitch Hedberg, Dave Chappelle. Um, I was a big fan of Brett Butler when I was younger. Um, also, um, some more, who was a 
just a sassy, just wonderful black queen comedian. I used to watch a lot of the queen as a comedy, mm. like Monique and some more and Adele Givens and um, and then just kind of spread out through there. Seinfeld was a big influence for me, Larry David. Oh, Larry David, yeah. Yeah, so those are the things that kind of shaped, shaped my world. And then I started kind of going back and studying and really fell in love with like Carol Burnett and, and um, her whole crew. And You mentioned one of the names that I was gonna ask about, Larry David. I saw that you did uh, a little bit of stuff with Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any interaction with Larry or, at all or anything like that on that set or was that? Oh yeah, that yeah. was the best part about the whole um, process was that even the audition was fun because the audition was you just showing up and Larry's there and Jeff Garland's there and the uh, casting agent's there and you kind of just improvise a scene together with Larry David at the audition. That's pretty cool. And so I went in for a different part and then they, they gave me uh, the part they gave me and I just came in and it's all, I was like, make a meal of it, have a lot of fun, just keep keep talking, keep talking <laughs> until he tells you to shut up. Yeah, yeah, and, give him everything. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And then we did a couple of takes and then Larry just walks over to me and he's like, you're really making a meal out of this. And I was like, like that I was like, that was exactly what I needed to hear. And Yeah, and, he got it, that's yeah, great. Yeah, got exactly what I wanted and they even like took the deleted scene and posted it out online and stuff. So it made me feel like, oh, you know, I did a good job. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Modern magic. There's another thing before I continue with your awesome career. I saw that you did something called Killing Hasselhoff. You were a part in this. Yeah. I have no idea what this is. Can you oh. fill me in on what the fuck Killing Hasselhoff was? Yeah, it is a horrible movie starring <laughs> a bunch of great people. Awesome. But it is not good. <laughs> um, I play a character named Bill Sagliano, if that makes any sense. Sagliano. <laughs> you look exactly like a Sagliano. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Oh, that is, that is, that is perfect. Just, Straight from Jersey. Sagliano. Yeah. You know, when we talked about doing the show together and everything like that, I was like, I was really excited to talk to you about wrestling because there's not a lot of people that I know that, like, in my world that are, like, that fanatic about wrestling. So I don't know if you're into doing this. You could totally say no. We can cut it later. Don't worry about it. But I used to play this board game as a child. I don't know if you've ever seen it before. And... I used to have to play it by myself. Okay. No one else would play with me. Oh, I, I was, I was one of those guys. Already, I'm in. All right, all right. So let's get this set up and play this game while we continue this interview. Let's do it. All right, cool. This segment is brought to you by Wrestle Challenge, the board game, the only game that lets you slam the competition while you roll some dice, have a drink, and shoot the shit. Wait, we can't say shit on TV then? We're gonna pick our our all-star team. <laughs> We got the big boss man. We got Mr. Perfect. We got Earthquake. We got Jake the Snake Roberts. The Ultimate Warrior. The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. The Macho Man, Randy oh, Savage. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Brother. And the Rick, the model, Martel. You're gonna get first pick. Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna build it together like the classic Survivor Series team. And I'm gonna go, and I know <laughs> I you love think this. that I'm gonna go with Hulk Hogan off the top because he is the biggest draw, but also I am familiar with his past recently. So. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't all vitamins? <laughs> so I have to go with, with, I think, who is the people's favorite, the macho man, Randy, Randy Savage. Oh, He's gonna yeah. be my number one pick. Yeah. Okay, that's your number one pick. All right, my all right. Number one. Well, on my third episode of this show, I had Jake the Snake Roberts. Mm. Brooks Wackerman, 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 Wackett. Are you serious? I gotta be loyal. You made a horrible mistake. As I'm <laughs> going to reunite the Mega Powers. Oh no! I left it wide open. Hope, even though I talk trash about his racial issues, Brother. I can get over that. Because <laughs> he's Hulk Hogan. And you're, and yeah, and now you've got the powers. All I right, got right, the right, mega powers right, together, right, we right, winning. All right, all right, no. This is the one that I'm gonna go to next because of his work inside the ring. Mr. Perfect to me, <sighs> Kurt Henning was an incredible wrestler inside the you ring. You don't know how hard that hurts me. But, you know what? That's okay. We still going. We got a great team pulled together. And I want to go with, I mean, I think I have to go with the ultimate yeah, warrior. Yeah, I knew it, I knew it. 
You just got you we got, got classic got team building. It's over a good here. thing that this is a, a board game and not like a real matchup. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. If this was a real matchup <laughs> in the late '80s, you you know you count. You looking up at the lights. I'm gonna ride with my bad boys. I'm gonna take the million dollar man because everyone's got a price. Ted DiBiase, baby. That's a beautiful pet. And I gotta go with you. With, I think one of the most underrated big men to ever do it in all of wrestling. And I gotta go with the big boss man. Okay, okay, okay. So now here we're left. So I think I gotta go with the model. You got to. I mean, the model, he just breathes air again. That's the yeah. bad guy team right there. I mean, me and, him, me and him have that. Yes, what is, that's what we got. We got a little Survivor Series going on. He's like, all right, man, your first roll. You got three. Looks like we got our first oh, we match. Got a fight. The following contest is scheduled for the best two out of three balls. Oh, I would watch this match. Oh, <laughs> that's a good match. That'd be a good match, man. That's a good, oh, that's a good heel baby face right there. The style of Jake the Snake versus the power move of the big boss man with Cobb County, Georgia on his side. Ooh. Who's going to win? We'll find out. Let's find out. All right. Ooh. Oh! Snake eyes. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> the headlock. All right, one, They're tied up. two, three. Now that's oh! Snake Eyes. This is fucked up. This has never happened in this game ever. This All is right. a great match. One, two, three. Oh, oh my God! God! No oh! way! It's the best of the game. My forever. The great game. Whoever fucking knew, we should have been booking this shit. This is shit. awesome! One, two, three. Oh, ah, man. Man, we got the, the first Alabama round. Now that we both understand what, how the game is played, let's continue a little bit of uh, some wrestling talk while we're doing this. Okay. I understand that uh, you did Get High Watch Wrestling with X-Pac, formerly 123 Kid. Mm -hmm. WWE Hall of Famer. WWE Hall of Famer. But it was just uh, um, a great experience because it's all the things that I love and enjoy. It was kind of like mystery science theater meets pro wrestling. So we would that just- That sounds fucking incredible. Yeah, it's great. We just get together. We would edit together just these clips of old wrestling that we like and we would just make fun of them. It'd be me, X-Pac, some other wrestlers who are in LA or some comedians who love wrestling. And we would all just, kinda, it was always just, a celebration of the weirdness and the silliness of wrestling, and we'd get real stoned. And all right, all right, all right. Seven. Oh, I get to Ooh. pick my challenge in a strategic fashion. Of that, I'm gonna put my DiBiase against your Nacho Man. Ooh, Ooh <laughs> that's a good card tonight. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Making their way to the ring. Oh yeah. Put it right over that money. One, two, three. Oh, that was a close one, but Macho Man pulls it this out. This is some bullshit. We'll go roll up on One, two, three. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Here it is for all the marbles. This one's for all the marbles. One, two, three. Oh, that's pathetic. A two beats me. A two beats me. It's terrible. Damn. All right, now I've got one competitor left. I did a thing for another company called GCW. Um, and um, I got to commentate a match with Jerry Lawler. That, that's, that, that's a five. Know, right, what are we going to call that? What are we going to call that? Judge Rules? That's a mulligan. That's a five. That's a five. That's a five. It don't matter yet. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, like we were battling yet. That's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, but now we are. Oh, oh I'm shit. back oh, yeah. out. Third match of the night like it's the king of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> it is now time for our main event. One. Two, three. Don't count out the Macho Man yet. Oh man, he's, he's going for it. He's gonna get the top rope. One, two, three. Oh, Seven, he's six. climbing to I the can't top! The break. He's climbing to the oh, top! Oh, one, two, three. Come on, Damien, help me out. Oh, oh, the Macho Man, the beautiful elbow drop. Oh, Elizabeth, we're coming home. We're gonna kiss you. That's a mixture of Macho Man and Red Fox. I'm coming <laughs> home to you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Hell of a game, man. Hell of a game. Oh, oh man. I'm glad he played. Now we've gotten the wrestling fucking shit out of the way. I got my ass kicked. <laughs>
anything I might not know about that you're excited about coming up in the future? You got some projects um, coming? Yeah, I'm working on a couple of things. I mean, Jexy is the main thing, you know, that I'm real excited about like October 11th. Uh, but I'm working October 11th, on, everybody. October 11th. Check in out theaters. Jexy. Go see it in theaters. Make people surprised that I am a box office draw. <laughs> <laughs> so I know on your podcast, Getting Better, does make you feel better. When Thank you. It. it does. It makes me really happy. That's what I like, what I get out of it the most. Um, Cause I don't really get money out of it, but I get a lot. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me there's no money in what I'm doing here? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> what can money be used for? It is money anyway. You know, I got a couple of friends that do some, some pretty stupid things when they're drinking. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a couple of scenarios. I want you to put a positive spin on it. Make, make them feel a little bit better about what they did. Chew. Okay, cool. We're gonna start off. My friend, mm -hmm. um, first time he ever met Chris Jericho, mm. was giving him all these kind of praises about, man, I used to love the way you came out with that acoustic guitar and hit him over the head. Mm. And then he was corrected by Chris Jericho and said, hey, dude, that was Jeff Jarrett. And he went, oh shit, that was Jeff Jarrett. And felt really bad about it the next morning. What do you say to somebody like that? Best thing I say is that is easy mistake. Easy they, mistake. They both have long flowing hair. At they the both time, have the outfits head. that make them look like sassy aunts. They both have great hair. It's beautiful. Good looking guys. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I think my friend. Sassy feel, I think my friend's watching this and feeling better already about yeah. himself. So, I have this other friend. Got drunk on a tour bus. Um, went to bed. In the middle of the night, he mistook one of the bunks as the restroom. And his best friend's father happened to be in that bunk. So mm -hmm. he pissed on his best friend's father's mm -hmm. face. And what do you say to a guy like that? And say, oh, I mean, your best friend's probably really, really appreciative that you did that. <laughs> I'm sure he has some issues with his dad that were unresolved. I know I do. I think we all do. And if you pissed in my dad's face, I would secretly be like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. But deep down, I would have been like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> And so lastly, my friend mm -hmm. was naked in bed with his new girlfriend one night. And before sex, he tried to sneak out a fart, which, you know, we all have. Oh, yeah, we've all been there. You've been like, ah, oh, man, I really shouldn't do this, but, you know, mm -hmm. got to try. I'll be discreet about it. But he accidentally puts a fat shard out. Mm. And he ends up marrying this woman years later. So it worked out, but, I mean... At that moment in time, when he when that's happening, can you give some advice to my friend that sharded before sex? Yeah, you just found the one because she didn't leave. So clearly, <laughs> it's meant to be. If they don't leave, that's a test. That's, that's a, a that test of love yeah, that, that was passed. That's a true test, uh, people out there. If you can't shard in front of your loved one, you gotta rethink everything. You do. I probably my girlfriend would leave me. <laughs> 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 when affirmations go real. <laughs> Alright man, that was a lot of fun. Alright Ron, thanks again for hanging with I had a fucking blast with you man. Thank you. I had a new friendship with you, I yeah. believe. This was a lot Play of fun. Games. Why don't you tell some of the people out here where else they could find Ron Funches? Uh, yeah, um, the easiest place is my website, ronfunches.com. Find out my dates, where I'm going to be, if I'm going to be in your area. I'm always touring, never stop. I love doing it. Um, I got my podcast, Getting Better Podcast. Fantastic. Um, it's out everywhere. So check that out. My special, Giggle Fit. That's on iTunes, Google Play, everywhere. Five bucks or less, so please find that. And then just Jexy, the movie, out October 11th with Adam Devine, Michael Pena, Alexander Shipp, Charlene Yee. Go see it. I don't think that they're not pushing it. I don't think they think it's going to do well. But let's prove them wrong. <laughs> I like the idea of this movie. This is going to be think fantastic. It's good. It's gonna be I good. will tell you, I've been pretty honest about my things if they were bad or good. And this is a pretty good movie. I mean, you were pretty honest about killing fucking Hasselhoff. Bad movie! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, man. Thanks again. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, uh, for more, go go ahead and check out drinkswithjohnny.com. We got all the casts right there, all the podcasts, all the YouTube, everything there. And if uh, you're really lazy, just go anywhere you podcast. That's right there on your smartphone, and you'll be able to find more of this wonderful conversation I had with my new friend, Ron. Thanks a lot. Cheers.